Hi, my name is Christine. I use she, her pronouns. I am a senior. I'm studying psychology, disability studies, and American Sign Language. And the research that I'm presenting for you today is titled Disability Gain, Exploring the Advantages of Different Bodies and Minds. So to give you a little bit of background on myself and why I'm interested in this research, this is a picture of my mom. Both of my parents are deaf, um, which makes me a CODA, child of deaf adults. And I was raised with American Sign Language and deaf culture and the deaf community, all of which really enhanced my life and changed my perspective on the world. Things that I saw as gains. My parents also saw them as gains and they wouldn't even want to be hearing even if they could. And when I tell people this, it kind of surprises them most of the time. And it's a hard framework for them to grasp. So when I came to college, I took that framework and all of those experiences and dove into disability studies. And I learned about two different ways of looking at disability through models. The first is the medical model of disability, which sees disability as a bad thing, as something to be fixed within an individual, as opposed to the social model of disability, which sees disability as a natural part of diversity and something that we should be changing environments to fit people's needs. And so with the social model, seeing disability as part of diversity, it made me think a little bit about can disabilities become advantageous in certain contexts? And if so, what are those circumstances? So in order to explore this research question, I conducted 18 different semi-structured interviews with individuals who identified as deaf and or disabled. And the identities ranged from autistic to blind, to having dyslexia, depression, wheelchair users, OCD, all sorts of different things. Um, each interview was recorded, transcribed, and then analyzed for codes and themes, and I will share those themes with you now. So our results first was gains from the impairment itself, and this was a really interesting thing to look at. Some people who were wheelchair users, especially power wheelchair users, talked about how when given flat surfaces and accessible pathways, they can really travel a lot faster than people who are walking, which became really advantageous when it was passing period and you have 10 minutes to go grab lunch and then go back to your class on the other side of campus. If you know the accessible pathways, you can get around really, really fast. Um, some people, particularly those who are autistic and deaf, talked about their ability for cross-cultural communication because they had grown up, you know, having to communicate with people who were hearing or people who were non-autistic or neurotypical, which made them really, really good at understanding communication cues and then made them really great at communicating with people from all types of different backgrounds, which made it really easy for them to travel. Another thing that I saw was people who use screen readers, particularly those with vision impairments or people who are blind, talked about how you can turn the speed up on the screen reader so that you can read a lot faster than anybody else. And this person, one person in particular, talked about how he went through, you know, three books in a day because of this ability. The other type of gain that emerged through the themes was gains from existing within an ableist world. And this does not justify the oppressive system in any form. Um, but you had people talking about how they were really innovative and really creative and great problem solvers and really resilient and had really great sense of self-love and who they were because they had to exist in a world where environments were not accessible to them. They were discriminated against. People who, you know, are seen as a tragedy, seen as if something is wrong with them and existing within that framework led them to become really resilient. Some other themes that also emerged through this process was just contributions to the world in general. We talked a lot about biodiversity and talked about inventions that were originally intended for disabled people and how those things were really important. It's important to have disability in a world because then you start to learn how to design for a wide range of needs. Um, and you know things like curb cuts and text-to-speech software and motion sensors, all of which were originally developed for people with disabilities are now used really widely. And then the other thing that came up was conflicts with pain and suffering. So a lot of people who had chronic pain syndromes that I had talked to, particularly fibromyalgia and endometriosis, had a really hard time with this idea of disability gain. It felt very alienating to them because their disability is inherently painful. So it was really hard to see it as any sort of benefit. And why does it matter? A lot of children who are raised and have disabilities from birth end up going through a lot of depression and a lot of anxiety because they're never told that their identity is something worthy. Um, so that's a future direction for this study is to start designing interventions for children with, dis with disabilities to promote positive identity development. And the same thing for people who acquire disabilities later in life through a trauma or anything like that, designing sort of interventions with that. And then sort of just changing society's understanding of disability from bad to complex. Thank you.